So I would normally be dropping this video tomorrow, but I can already foresee my schedule being double booked. So yeah, I bumped it up to today. We need to bounce around the Division universe. I've got some thoughts on Resurgence, the OG Division, the Division 2, and then the Division 3 returns to the discussion with news coming out of Massive. What's going on, everybody? It's Latuna Buzz Lightbeer, and coming off of Sunday's epic survival Sunday 69 Hunter Spawn Madness, I've touched on both the Division and the Division 2 during this week's uploads, and the bulk of today's news will center on these two games. But before we begin, if you aren't yet a subscriber, please smash that big, beautiful sub button, and don't forget to ring the notifications bell and set your alerts to receive all or you could miss my latest upload. That's really important to set those bell notifications. Lots of little items to run by you today, so let's get started. Starting off this week's Division Universe Roundup is Resurgence, which is closing down its second open beta test later today. And if you're looking for a comprehensive review of this one, I will leave a link to my 18 minute review down in the video description and pinned comments. Resurgence was a game I wasn't completely prepared to review, so when I did receive an invite just kind of out of the blue, I went in knowing literally nothing about mobile games. My dilemma with this free-to-play mobile title was wondering who this game was actually designed to appeal to. Resurgence takes many set pieces and cues from the OG Division game that released back in 2016 and then adds on community desires such as open world, clan base building, and talking protagonist. There's also a timed Dark Zone Extraction mode and 4v4 Conflict PvP allowing players to get in their fix even when traveling. Hopefully with the close of this second playtest, the dev team will next be looking to open this up for North American players. Sticking with this theme of New York City, and we next need to shift over to the OG Division game, and believe it or not, we've got news on this one. The updated global event rotation schedule was recently posted for the end of 2022, and this one's going to carry you all the way through 2023, showing on screen now. Onslaught closes out the year starting on December 26th, so that's the day after Christmas. And just to jog your memory on this global event, this is the one that enhances your weapon with elemental damage types. And by reloading, you can cycle through burn, bleed, and gas. Three actually interesting looking masks are available to earn for Onslaught, including Oni, Ember, and Smiler, as well as four classified gear sets, Firecrest, Lone Star, Predator's Mark, and Reclaimer. Now, I've received several requests to break out my old Firecrest build and set the world ablaze for a future Division video, and I may just have to do that. Fan favorite Survival continues to be a source of pride for the franchise, and in case you missed it, I'm going to leave you a link where, thanks to the efforts of many Division agents, we took over a Survival server. So we maxed it out at 24 players, and through our collective efforts, we actually got 69 hunters to spawn in a single play session. Of course, I recorded it all along with voice comms, and it's absolutely worth a view, because this is hunter mayhem on a scale seldom seen. And now on to The Division 2, which I guess we could say had an interesting week. I posted this video two days ago outlining my unscripted thoughts as to what was happening with the proposed changes and then revert for the General Anderson Mission Exotic Farm. And I still stand by those basic principles of if it isn't good for player enjoyment and it doesn't improve player engagement, then it should not be added or changed within the game. Now I speculated as to why the changes were not made, and I've seen others posting their own thoughts on this, but we can now also add on this latest bit of information concerning the weapon at the heart of this issue, the Dr. Home Exotic Rifle. 
I tested this as part of my recording session this morning. I've received DMs about it as well, and it's also posted on the Division 2 Known Issues board under the heading of Investigating. Here's how it reads. The Dr. Home Exotic Rifle Deconstruction doesn't, let me repeat that, does not give exotic components. And again, just speculating here, but this also could have contributed to the team's decision to revert their original plan changes to that exotic loot farm. This, in reality, could have been much, much worse if they had proceeded and then actually implemented either a full removal of exotics from the General Anderson reward structure, despite what they had posted, or they attempted to implement a Dr. Home only reward scheme that would have awarded players the weapon over and over, only to find out it could not be broken down for an exotic component. I've also seen numerous posts from players logging in only to not receive their Santa suits, of which they are told to contact Ubisoft support, who will then manually grant them the reward. And good luck to anyone that is having to go through that. There's also several mentions of PC Delta and stability issues here on the Known Issues board. And I can personally say that I don't see deltas or disconnects from the servers while playing. My issue doesn't seem to be named here on the board, but it involves the game completely freezing and then showing as Tom Clancy's The Division 2 has stopped responding when I have to activate the task manager to hard close the game. It happens while I'm in the heat of battle and missions, and it happens while I'm just standing still at the boo examining my gear. There's no rhyme or reason to this. There's no warning and no plan as to what I could avoid doing as to help the game to not crash. Anyways, before moving over to the last Division 2 topic, make sure to at least log in every day this week for your rewards. For example, for today, it's an exotic cache, which at the very least means one exotic component. Okay, sticking with the Division 2, and you've probably seen this post that ETF or Elite Task Force invite emails have now been sent out, and I wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate anyone that received one. Since what is discussed within this group is covered under strict NDA, I guess what I wanted to instead discuss is something to do with the expectations placed on this ETF initiative. If you can just bear with me, think of the Division 2 as a house. Massive, the developers, design the house. They get the plans, they lay the foundation, they frame it, install electrical, plumbing, put up drywall, put on the roof, and everything a, a standard builder would normally do for a new construction home. ETF is there to handle small details like the millwork. Maybe, hey, move that window over several feet. You know, those sort of details. Expecting ETF to just swoop in and instantly correct the wrongs within the game is truly expecting too much. Don't get me wrong here, I'm glad that this concept is still alive and kicking, but expecting non-dev, non-Ubisoft, non-massive gamers to just walk in there and say, okay, fix this, fix that, and adjust this, and then poof, the Division 2 is everything you ever wanted for either PvE or PvP is just unrealistic. I remember the hours of discussions, the debates, the hotly contested changes, and all of it over very small details and potential changes. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the issues with the Division 2 run far and wide, and it's going to take far more than ETF to just get this all sorted. Again, I believe this is a step in the right direction. And speaking of taking steps in the right direction, or what could be steps, let's close out today's video with The Division 3. Now back on December 16th, Massive tweeted out that they were already looking for playtesters for their upcoming Star Wars project. And I think this caught more than a few people off guard, me included, as it was January 2021 that they even announced they were working on the next Star Wars game. And here we are, basically two years after that announcement, already calling for playtesters. How Massive ever got shifted away from starting development on The Division 3 is another story unto itself, but if their Star Wars game is already in the playtesting phase, and the Avatar game has been in development for some time, this could clear their schedules and allow the bulk of the dev team to shift back over to the next Division title earlier than expected. Now, does this mean we could see it next year? <laughs> Probably not. But whereas I was thinking maybe a five-year expectation window, this could mean a faster turnaround. With Resurgence and Heartland meant to fill the void while it's in development. 
Ubisoft continues to express their praise for this franchise, calling it one of their three pillars of success. Now, let's see if they continue to develop standalone titles based within the Division universe, or if they spend the big bucks and return to where it all started with this franchise. Lots of little bits of info for you today and some thoughts and ideas thrown in there as well. As always, leave me your feedback in the comment section below and I'm going to do my best to respond. Remember to smash that sub button and ring the notifications bell to receive my division uploads. If you could also rate and or share this video, that would be greatly appreciated. Remember, you can find and follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and over in my community Discord server. Links to all my socials can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.